there. That's the point she was making. And I, I think it's disingenuous of you to suggest that. I mean, first of all, most of these conservatives don't even care about the black crime that's taking place in cities like Chicago and other places. And if they actually well, I sure do, and, and I actually, live there. If they actually listen to what black people are saying, the majority of black people, 74% of black people support an assault weapons ban. 86% of black people support a federal registry of gun purchases. If you want to listen to what black people and black parents are saying about weapons and about the gun crime in our communities, then listen to us. Don't just lecture us from a, a CPAC conference. And, and how dare she, and how, and how dare she and go? How dare she go to CPAC and say that when the night before she was in the town hall on CNN in Parkland and she refused to say any of that? What a cowardly thing to go to a CPAC conference in front of a conservative audience and make those comments. Just like Wayne Lapierre. Why didn't? Are you a conservative? Do you consider yourself a conservative? I mean, I, I know sort of what your politics are, mostly through Twitter and the show, but I'm not I, I, sure. I think. I don't want to reject the conservative label, yeah. uh, but, you know, I've written for the Huffington Post. Uh, you know, I'm anti-guns. I think the Second Amendment is a farce in 2017. So you would scrap it all together? Yeah, the Second Amendment's a joke. Really? Uh, in, in my view. I, I think that, uh, you know, the right to bear arms and to have a militia to protect yourself against the government and all, I, I think made sense back when the Constitution was written. But unless we're all going to have access to drones, <laughs> we really can't protect ourselves against the government. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't have any stealth bombers, <laughs> anything. But how do you reconcile that as someone that obviously has a healthy distrust of power? Uh, again, I just think guns are unhealthy. I, I think that gun violence, I'm an African American, and when you look at the statistics about who gun violence really impacts, it's us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I just look at the stats and say, you own a gun in your home, you're more likely to shoot a family member, a friend, a loved one, than you are an intruder. Uh, and again, I get why people like to hunt. I'm not against hunting and guns for that reason. But all the handguns that are proliferated and all the semi-automatic weapons and all the stuff people are buying up preparing for the end of the United States of America, yeah. if the government decides they want to take us out, they'll drone tank stealth us into submission and our guns won't mean that So you much. think it's, it's a lost battle yes. anyway with our... With our <laughs> supposed to have a gun. Mm -hmm. And so I, Castillo, rest in peace. I really don't like guns. I really don't like guns. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the more that you know people pos possess guns, the more they're going to use them. And I wish that we could shut it down. I really do. I understand what you're saying, the differences in the various states. Um, and they have a right uh, to create their own laws. The federal government can't override all of that. I just think in our community, we must not only educate about guns, and be aware of the violence that takes place and work very hard to do everything that we can to tell folks this is not the way to solve a dispute. Right. This is not Absolutely. the way to deal with uh, the fact that somebody has, you know, dis you. Uh, we cannot kill each other. Are you, are you pie or baseball games, gun violence is uniquely an American problem. Prior to 2011, we were averaging mass shootings 200 times a day. Since 2015, we're at 64 mass shootings per day. And what we see in Las Vegas was not a crime of opportunity. This was a premeditated act of a domestic terrorist. And just because his last name is not hard for us to say, we have to use the correct labels here. And what is true here is that when you have hatred, you cannot regulate that. You you cannot regulate evil, but you can regulate guns. Yeah. Those are I'm being stupid as fuck about gun control. You're not gonna fight off a tyrannical government with an AR-15 or an M-16, so give it up. It's not a constitutional right. They didn't have assault weapons when the Constitution was written. It took 10 minutes to load two bullets. Get the fucking AR-15s off the street or sacrifice your family and friends to mass murder. That's the only way it could go. Peace and love, baby. <laughs> also, peace and love. Hey, um that is, I think, the real challenge. There wasn't a lot uh, of talk about guns um, at the listening session today. No. No, no I mean, I, I, so, again, you know, we go to, um, I think my default is you need to ban assault weapons. And then there's a conversation with Republicans on, well, that hasn't been effective. I had that conversation, well, I tried to have that conversation with SC earlier. Um, and I think the issue here is 
folks get hot, caught up in the assault weapons, but don't talk about the exemptions. Yeah, I, I want to get Paris in. Paris, so, so listen, 97% uh, of America has with people right. who somehow believe that uh, the Second Amendment uh, says that literally anybody Absolutely. at any time can have any type right. of gun. Exactly. I'm sorry, a gun should not be easy to get. Right. It shouldn't be. I you mean, you have 310 and you million have privately owned guns and you have people still saying that we should be selling more. That's what has to be attacked. Frankly, I don't think the reporting on it you know, Vox has been doing some great reporting on this, and everybody, a lot of people have been going there on this. I mean, there's a ex, there's an expletive uh, related hashtag that comes out with <laughs> regard to the NRA when these things happen, right. and it gets right to the point. I don't think it's the reporting; it's the lobbying. It is the political pressure, yeah, but, and until that no, changes, I think it's like 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 Let me just say this. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this: the Second Amendment isn't going anywhere. The NRA, with all due respect, isn't going anywhere. We've got to find a but way to make it difficult. Well, but that's what I'm about to. You, you, <laughs> you're where you're mm -hmm. waiting for me. Mm -hmm. We've got to make it more difficult right. for politicians and right. elected officials That's right. to be intimidated by the NRA. We got to strengthen our own lobby and make it difficult That's for them point. to do it and make it difficult for them to get elected if they aren't uh, for common sense gun laws. Exactly. The voter has Because to we change. can control that. Right. That's right. We can't voter, control the NRA, NRA or the Second Amendment. Arm, right. That NRA political arm is something that has to be replicated on the, on the left to counter them and that hasn't Absolutely. really happened. Yeah, you exactly. can't make their lobby you illegal. Right. Right. You can't exactly. eliminate exactly. them. Right. Right. You, have to, you have to figure out who you actually want to target as well because it's not just you know it, it's not just that every single poll no one's going to say they're in favor of mass shootings right I mean they all say it's yeah, mass shootings the argument comes in when people say well NRA. this isn't how you fix it mm -hmm. so we have to actually target who are the specific individuals Robert in the Goodlock house in this is one <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want that isn't well, going to happen. That's isn't part of the solution. problem, then. And you brush aside, you brush aside the idea that other responsible people who've shown a commitment to no, these I think children that people who have guns to undertake that. Most of the people who have guns are responsible and use them responsibly. That is not the issue, and you're conflating two different issues. That that's not the issue. But you don't. Do you need a a, a um, military grade weapon? on the streets of the United States, anyone who is not a police officer or who is who is trained or licensed to use it, no, we don't need that. Why do we need to have that silly argument and pretend that we're that it's other than our access to guns? Well, you know, if it's a silly I, argument, like then it's not an argument point. at all. Yeah, go um, on, Van. So, uh, I, I, Ken makes a good point in talking about, listen, let's have an open mind and let's have a, a full conversation. And I am actually glad an open mind, though, Van, doesn't mean being stupid. Come on, let's well, let's be well, honest. I'm just trying to I'm trying to go somewhere, though. It, yeah. So, so <laughs> let, let, let let me. The way to do it is to present the way that other countries do it. The way they don't have mass shootings in schools, they don't actually have that number of ac they don't have the access to guns that we do. They don't they don't allow people okay, who have mental wanna, mental wanna, issues to, to have access to guns. They don't, allow, don't, they don't allow to have young people who have access to guns. They have universal background checks. They make sure that we actually restrict certain guns so they're not in, in use. We don't need to, everyone okay. does not need to have an assault weapon. Steve, quick answer because I also want to get into a point that Dana Lash made today, but please respond. Here's the other thing: even if gun control were a good idea, which I don't think at all it is, but let's say for the sake of argument that it is. There are already 10 million AR-15s in this country. There are 300 million total guns. That toothpaste is not going back in the tube. They did it we still Australia. have a problem with school shootings, and we need to protect our school children, even if I were to grant you gun control, which I certainly they don't. They did it in Australia. But, but they, they, they do you believe it, that Americans they, are going to give up their fundamental no, right? Nobody, Australia is a nobody, very different nobody country thought from America. they would do it in Australia, goodness, but they, the they had way. a gun buyback program that was very successful, and they've had no mass shootings since then. Let, let, I want to play, because this is a wide... Legislators fear not just the NRA's money in terms of being able to lobby against them, but actually their safety, their physical safety, if they go up against people whose sole voting issue, issue in life, the most important thing to them is having as many guns as they can get. Well, I'll tell you, uh, first off, uh, all of us should be prepared to decry any threats of violence against any individual. Um, I do hope, uh, Joy, that you wear it as a badge of honor that you were called out as one of those folks who are calling out the NRA for their tactics. I mean, in our uh, law here in Florida, in Tallahassee, it wasn't even as courageous as the representative mentioned. Uh, it simply said you can't shoot guns in city parks. And in spite of that, they took us to court. We got overloaded with their emails uh, from the members 
from across the country. Uh, these are commonsensical things. And you would even believe uh, that members of the NRA would agree that, you know what, if it's 21 to have a beer, uh, what is so radical about it being 21 in order for you to access a gun that unfortunately uh, an AR-15 that can take out the lives of 17 individuals or 49 individuals in the case of Pulse uh, a nightclub? It's, it's simply unreasonable, but it gives you a sense of how far they've been able to take this fight uh, in many of the states, my state being ground zero for that fight. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I beat them as a city councilman, and I look forward to beating them as the governor of the great state of Florida, uh, that there will not be able to run roughshod over us and over our state and the 20 million people that call this state home and you know um uh, these these schools and these tragedies happen in america and there's there's been no change to, to gun control i don't have the answer to this so we can let's just sit here and we all gonna just try to we just having like a, a um a round table right now because i don't have the answers to it but We have to we have to do something about it because it's at we all sending our, we all sending our kids to school right we, we, all you guys who have who have kids we're all sending our kids to school and we all feel we, we drop them off at eight o'clock at three fifteen they're gonna be ready to get picked up either we're picking them up or someone in our family is picking them up or they have to take a bus or if there's aftercare and you know they stay till five if they have. You know, study table, they got to stay till 530, whatever. But we all feel like our kids are going to return, right? We have a kid who wasn't legal, legally not able to go into, to get a beer at a bar, but could go buy an a AR-14 or buy or AR-15. Like, is that, how... It doesn't it doesn't make sense and I'm not saying he should be legal to go buy a beer but I'm saying how is it possible that we can have minors to go buy a gun um, I don't have the answer to it but nice In any civilized society, you do not see massacres continue to happen from Tucson to Aurora to uh, uh, Columbine to Virginia Tech to where we are now in, in, uh, uh, in Newtown to Chicago. And you keep the same laws when clearly they're not working. What happens when the criminal goes to knives, Al? Then you deal with knives. Oh, I the see. same how thing about, is if you have a head cold, and, and the same thing you do if you have a head cold and the cold is gone and you have a headache. Then you I take see. headache so medicine. Any, the any job context. of society is to deal with whatever problem confronts it. We'll walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Um, I've yet to see him walk much in a way that I think is, you know, supportive of policy that helps to shape um, American lives in any real meaningful, positive way. Um, the thing that they is just got a big tax cut that, <laughs> that they're real happy with. Yeah, but I that's some folks are real happy with, mm -hmm. particularly very elitist rich folks are happy with. No, no, but middle I, class. Well, I'm, I'm, I would I'm just want to talk out. about gun control right now. I see. Okay. We we're just talking about how civil we've been for five years, so let's stay there, especially on an issue like this. I'm trying to let you not get ahead of yourself here. Oh, I don't need you to help me get not okay. get ahead of myself. I'm fully grown. I'm 38 years old, honey. <laughs> okay. So. Um, one of the things that is maddening to me, Brooke, I remember when I first started working for the CBC. Yeah. One of the first issues we ended up taking on because it was a crisis was Gabby Giffords being shot. And I remember thinking before that moment, it's going to take it to happen to one of them before they do anything meaningful in this space. That's what those students were telling me last week. It's amazing. And that didn't even change it. 
So here you have yet another mass shooting and you just have to wonder how many people have to die before we truly do something. And this isn't the first attempt. I remember President Obama wiping tears away from his eyes with Sandy Hook, right? So you just have to think, you know, these little piecemeal solutions won't work. That means that there are going to be gaping holes in the policy. We have to do something that results in real change. I think about... But what about this potential real change, you know, from the president? Could could happen, right? Raise the age of buying an AR-15 for me. But why are, are we selling AR-15s? I, I mean, think the danger. You know, whole conversation. That's exactly stop. right. But the, the danger here, and I understand the desire to do something that feels big, significant, impactful. But banning a whole category of guns that's responsible for less than two percent of gun crime might feel good but doesn't actually work to solve gun crime. If you talk to people who have researched this, and, and from the left, in fact, um, they actually think the more targeted, uh, discreet, narrow policies that address mental health specifically, domestic violence specifically, suicide specifically, uh, actually have the bigger impact. So we know when we passed an assault weapons ban for 10 whole years, it did not measurably lower gun crime. And in fact, one of those banned guns was used in, in Columbine. Um, we should be talking about laws that can help um, prevent future mass shootings. But AR 15s, I mean, I know you say 2%, but 2% is less than 2%. Less than 2%. Two, less than 2% yeah. Isn't that too much dead. when you talk about 6 and 7 year olds and when you talk about 16, 17, and 18? Well, when you put it in that exactly. context, of course it's awful. It's awful. But let's talk about the you know 80% of gun crime that's perpetrated in, in our cities or suicide deaths equally as awful. And shouldn't we be finding ways? passable legislation, by the way, that can actually target gun crime, Does she have the a point? scourge of gun crime in meaningful ways, not just ways that sound impactful, but really aren't. I'm not pushing anything that just sounds impactful. I think that if we save one life, it matters. And so if this moment means that we'll start looking at things that we have traditionally ignored, I'm all for it. I, I am here to save the one life. And if it could be one million lives, Amen to that too. But, we but I don't, I don't, I don't think that we should take anything off the table right now. We need to be really coming to terms with the fact that we have a sick population that continues to do this. And I'm not just talking about folks with mental health issues. Maybe it's from video games. Maybe it's because they have access. Whatever it is, we need to be dealing with every single aspect of it. And by the way, Donald Trump, who first goes to Jeff Sessions and says, "I want you to do something about uh, the, um, bump the, stocks. the bump stocks." I want you to do something about the bump stocks. The very next day is undermining the person who he says will do something about it. But also very clear that it is going to require legislation. Where is he on Senator Feinstein's bill that would deal with this, right? So well, we assault weapons. There's some very there's some very tangible things that can be done. Let me ask you, ladies. That is, uh, no, no, no. I, I, tangible I, I, things that can be done is 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 absurd. If it were a tangible thing that could be done, it would have been done when Democrats held the White House. Do you, the House, I the can Congress, tell you why. I'll give you three letters. NRA. Far too much control, so Essie. You're, you're saying Democrats are also acting. You didn't, oh, you didn't know that there. You didn't know that. The, the absolutely, you didn't know that there were Democrats who were beholden to NRA. Oh no, I do. Fifty-four okay. of them lost their house seats. Okay, in so then be clear. The so then don't act like weapons. it's absurd. No, no, no. It's, it's so sad that, it's that this is the the energy in this in this conversation when people die. Like it, it doesn't have to be okay, here. Okay, that sounds really good. But but let's it's let's true. talk in facts. When you say it's tangible to pass an assault weapons ban. It, it, it actually isn't. That's why Democrats didn't do it when they had total control. No, it's now it's time for us to take the. Now. Yeah, now it's time for us to take the NRA out. But they Watch did us do it. What do you under, mean take the NRA out? What it means mean? it's time for us to limit the control the NRA has over How the Congress because people are dying. It means that we start standing up organizations and fund them to do things very differently the from NRA what the NRA is doing. It means that millions of people who make okay, small dollar contributions, like me. What would you? You want to take me out? How do you do that? What I just said, if right. you wanted to have a conversation. No, I am. I'm just asking, how are you going to take me But you're me not out? listening. I, I'm, I'm asking a very real question. Yeah, it's so do you want to do you want to listen? To take the oh, NRA no, I'm out? Just talking but platitudes. what does that I just mean, don't think Angela? You, what does I don't that mean? Think, do you want to listen now, or you still want to host? I'm asking. Okay, so what I said was there's organizations that are being stood up mm -hmm. to combat the narratives, the policies that the NRA pushes, and we need to fund those organizations to ensure that the NRA is, NRA's voice is not just uh, muted, but we completely take them out because their their regulations, the things that they push, okay. are dangerous. To so this funding country. organizations to message against the NRA. It's not just messaging. Ways like it's supporting child it's supporting organizations. Just drives drives. Yeah, I didn't sense. say anything about that. I'm not. That was common sense. That was...
directly focused on increasing public safety in our city and county. I was proud when months ago, district attorneys from across the country, 17 district attorneys elected from across the country, joined me when I asked them to submit a brief to the United States Supreme Court outlining why this decision, the Heller decision, could impact public safety in a way that could threaten lives across this country. I was disappointed yesterday to read the majority opinion, which did not go far enough. Yes, it acknowledged that the Second Amendment is not an absolute right. Yes, it acknowledged the Second Amendment is not without limitations. However, because of the way the language was used to uphold the Second Amendment as an individual right, the NRA and others will be attacking San Francisco with the belief that the Heller decision equips them with an argument to say that we should not keep guns in locked boxes. They will use this decision to suggest we should not think about common sense regulation of guns in our community geared to keeping innocent people safe. And in that way, this United States Supreme Court decision... Oh, that's me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. At least yours doesn't play Call Me Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Sorry about that. Um, you had an Illinois firearm ID card and a concealed carry um, license in that state. And in Virginia, the, the, the gun laws are very, are very, very lax. They're very, very loose. You know, but law enforcement yeah. officers will tell you when, when there's more than one person that has a gun, it makes the situation more dangerous for them because they don't know yes. who the bad guys yes. are. But you yes. know what? More I guns is not the I answer. live in New York State, I'm just like, I'm just like... Chicago come from out of state uh, and benefit from lax, incomplete background checks. So there are common sense things that we can do. In fact, states that do comprehensive background checks see their violence against women, the murders associated with women, go down around 40%. And so I, I, I live with this. I have fears and concerns for myself, my neighbors, the family that lives with me. I live with this. I don't, I don't want to see another mass shooting, uh, uh, period. But I don't need a mass shooting to awaken my sense of urgency on these issues. And we should have a, a, a conversation that is inclusive, where there's intersectionality, because this issue deals with issues of race, it deals with issues of, uh, 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 of, of sexual violence against women, mm -hmm. uh, it deals with issues of mental health. There are so many issues that come together that manifest, erupt, um, when, a, when a, a gun is in the hands of somebody that shouldn't have it, uh, and, or a weapon of war is on our, in our community streets. By the way, uh, the, on the Chinese lunar calendar, I didn't get to this, it's Year of the Dog. People born in uh, 1958, 1970, 82, and 94, 2006, born in Year of the Dog. Woof, woof! 20 minutes after the hour, Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up with trending topics and more entertainment. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we know our listeners, our new listeners in Kansas City and surrounding areas are outraged by this story. Talk about tone deaf. Uh, children in a Missouri town, Missouri town are selling raffle tickets offering an AR-15 assault rifle as a prize to raise money for their baseball team. What? Wow. What? What? Can you believe that? No. That's unbelievable. Yeah, the rifle is the same type of weapon that was used last week in the Florida school shooting that, of course, killed 17 uh, innocent children. The uh, raffle was launched before the shooting, but Levi Patterson, the coach of the team, told the Kansas City Star that he plans to continue with the fundraiser. He's ignorant. Yeah. Patterson said he decided to turn it into a positive thing after getting the hate in the form of angry Facebook posts after the raffle was first reported. The weapon was donated as a prize by a team father and co-founder of the Neosho gun manufacturer Black Rain Ordnance Inc., which is currently pitching a Spec 15 AR pistol on its Facebook page. You're Here's right. the deal. Nothing, and listen to me, y'all, nothing supersedes these people's quest for money and for power. If money is at stake, and power is at stake. 
There is no limit. That's what this whole thing is about. The NRA plays on the Republican power's need for money Mm -hmm. and power. And they will do anything for it. This coach will do it because he wants money for this team. But one of the fathers of the baseball players, he's pushing his agenda. So if he puts mm-hmm. his rifle up, most people go to his website and mm-hmm. see this other yeah. pistol that's on yes. sale. And he's selling, making more money. There's no limit. Come on, no money limit. and it. power. It's that's all this is about. And until you find a way like these kids are talking about doing, if you accept that money, we will remove you from power. See, now mm-hmm. one, one without the other is empty in politics. They're calling it blood money, yeah. Money without the power in politics is empty. It's just a campaign donation then. Yeah. Unless you win, it's for nothing. Hmm. That's the <sighs> only way we can do this, you all, in 2018 and coming up in 2020, is we have to vote. And anybody that does not support a gun law, anybody, and that has to be the issue. Mm-hmm. See, you cannot let them change the narrative of the thing. You cannot let them make it economics and jobs mm-hmm. again. Because if they make the narrative, the platform, economics and jobs it again, changes. we're not talking we, about yeah, these talking guns. About guns. Right, and then we're just waiting for another mass shooting. Yeah, you man. Know? Yeah. It's That's, a doggone shame, yeah. man. I mean, the, 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 the whole thing in Sandy Hook happened with them little elementary kids. Yeah. Columbine happened. This happened. That this fool up in this window out in Mandalay Bay. You gotta be kidding me, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. don't nobody think we need to do something? You gotta be kidding me. Most people, I think, are for the Second Amendment right. Most people, I, I am for that. I think people should be able to protect themselves. But if you're going to be honest about it, I don't think our founding fathers had these automatic weapons and military st- style weapons in mind when the Second Amendment was drafted, when are, the Constitution implying, was drafted. So I, are you implying for the police or are you implying for the private citizen? Because the majority of private citizens are not allowed to own fully automatic weapons. It's obvious for anyone. Okay, well, the gun law says that you and I can't just randomly go out and buy an automatic weapon. So let's deal with the facts here. A semi-automatic weapon is a gun that you and I are allowed to own. And in different places, they have different rules. But to imply that anyone can walk out and buy an automatic weapon... Feel that, so... And then look, even before that, I don't even know if that would have stopped this young man from getting an AR-15 in Florida. He's Maybe not. 19 years old. The real conversation is how and why do you need a high-capacity assault rifle? Mm-hmm. And why are there people in our country that think that that's absolutely normal? Mm-hmm. That you need something in your home that can kill hundreds of people we're sick we have a problem all of us all of us don't try to separate yourself at some point as a country we're gonna have to accept all of the problems that we have together if we want this to be a together thing but how can you when this is so split there are people who's like us who have no use for guns who well, I wouldn't go that far. I'm not I'm not an anti gun like you. Well, We're different. I'm just anti assault rifle and then he's fine, to... fine. That, that, fine. That doesn't matter. Stop the line there. If there are people who are straight up uh, uh, anti assault rifle, automatic weapons, anti all of it, and then there are people who just refuse to see that as a problem. I don't know where the middle ground is, bro. They've all heard the arguments. It's so confusing. You don't need it for hunting. You don't need it for this. You don't need it for that. And if you're so pro guns, right? Like, why wouldn't you want the strictest rules? Why wouldn't you have extensive background checks? Yeah, you well, think some you're people a purist. do. Some people do. Some people do. Some people do. But the problem, and the reason I go back to the NRA, is the loopholes. The people making the guns. The gun maker. Mm-hmm. The people who put the serial numbers on the guns. The people who transport the guns in trucks or whatever transport from warehouse to a facility and guns go missing. And people are like, well, what do you mean guns went missing? What do you what are you saying? And that and that and, and in this case in Florida, I think this was I don't know yet. I haven't read anything. I've looked. How and where did this nineteen year old get this gun? Mm-hmm. Seven. Was it illegal? Cause I saw I'll be honest with everybody. A military grade weapon, that should not be street legal. 
Why? What's well, why, why do you hate the Second Amendment? What, no, I don't okay, hate the Second Amendment. Of course, I don't hate that at all. That's my point. No, look. I, I, listen, let me just state this. I don't hate the Second Amendment. I know you don't. My, my, my father had guns. My stepfather had guns. Any of my family members, especially women who live alone, who are vulnerable, I want them to be able to have a gun. Do I want them to have an AR-15? No. And why? One reason is if someone comes into the house and an AR-15, they're going to blow all the plumbing and the electricity and the whole wall. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's the point. During our Hot Topics meeting that I was um, reading that you said you are a defender of the Second Amendment, but you don't think civilians should have assault weapons. Let me tell you why. Okay. Let me tell you why I'm a defender of the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. I was a little girl growing up in Birmingham, Alabama in uh, the late 50s, early 60s. There was no way that Bull Connor and the Birmingham police were going to protect you. And so when white night riders would come through our neighborhood, my father and his friends would take their guns and they'd go to the head of the neighborhood, it was a little cul-de-sac, and they would fire in the air if anybody came through. I don't think they actually ever hit anybody. <laughs> but they protected the neighborhood. And I'm sure if Bull Connor had known where those guns were, he mm -hmm. would have rounded them up. And so I don't favor some things like gun registration. Mm -hmm. That said, it's time to have a national conversation about how we can deal with the problems mm -hmm. that we have. It's not going to be any single fix right. to the terrible events of Parkland. You're going to have to decide, well, should civilians really have uh, access to what are really military weapons. Uh -huh. What do we do about the age at which people well, can that, do this? And, and, and finally, let me just yeah. say, we also need to realize that if you get that many tips about somebody mm -hmm. uh, that they're going to cause harm, go These it's, it's people are certainly from, laughable. Rashid is from Chicago. Like, are, like stop. Just stop. Like, but Alice, also, I like you as a person, but this is crazy. Stop. But also, no. Alice, when you talk about armed guards, the people who are there protecting are police officers. Many of them are retired police officers. Some of them are on the job. They're trained to carry guns. Those are the people who, who um, most Americans around the country are saying should be able to carry guns. Most right. Americans want, you know, very stringent background checks. They want some sort of gun control. The, the NRA members are a very small minority of what America actually wants they're holding there, the rest there, of us first of all the idea that the kind of gun the size of guns the, the kind of um a magazine none of this matters well then fine just pass out bazookas uh, uh start selling neutron bombs on the open market and then when people start using the bazookas and doing crazy i'll say well it's not the bazooka owner you see it's just i mean it's, it's not the bazooka it's just the bazooka owners Obviously, the size of the cartridge matters. Obviously, the kind of weapon matters. That's why you can't buy bazookas, you can't buy neutron bombs, you can't buy weaponized drones, because these things matter. It's very, very frustrating. The, the shame that I see right now is that, on the one hand, we're not doing enough about mental health, but then we have people who are hiding behind the fact that we're not doing one thing to stop us from doing anything else, and that's wrong, too. On the passage of No Fly, No Buy, we're calling on the passage of a closing the loophole, but we're close, calling on a passage of bringing together police and community, the Law Enforcement and Integrity Act. And we will pray this weekend in Houston, marching for peace, nonviolence, and the action of the United States Congress to take violent guns and violent people off the streets of this nation. Allowed to bring their guns everywhere, into our schools, our parks, and even our churches. But their guns are not toys. They spread lies about immigrants and people of color to divide us and make us scared of our neighbors. And then they say guns are the only way to keep your family safe, all to sell more guns. They spend millions lobbying for laws that allow them to shoot first and stand their ground. But that just makes it easier to get away with murder. Now they're selling insurance that covers the cost. When a gun owner kills someone, and claim self-defense. Tell the two insurance companies that created NRA Carry Guard that you know who they are. Chubb and Lockton Affinity. It's gun reform. I have had the occasion to be sued by the NRA and the gun lobby. They had me in court for two years. Uh, the good news is we beat them at the circuit court, we beat them at the appellate court, and we want to see them in the Supreme Court. Um, it's time for regular folks to get uh, their voice again uh, in, this, in this process. Uh, We've had a major failure by uh, Commissioner Adam Putnam, um, uh, allowing for folks to have uh, gone unvetted uh, through the federal system uh, to get access to concealed weapons, putting people and everyday people in danger. 
Uh, we believe that there ought to be uh, comprehensive background checks. We believe that uh, there ought to be uh, sufficient waiting periods, that weapons of war should have no place on our city streets, uh, and that domestic violence abusers should not get access to weapons to snuff out the lives of their loved ones. Um, those are basic, those are common, and they enjoy a lot of support. In fact, majority support by Floridians all over the country, uh, the state. Say no to gun. Say no to gun. Say no to gun. <laughs> No American should fear for their lives when going to school, attending a concert, going to the movies, the mall, or a religious service. We know the steps to take to reduce the prevalence of gun violence in our country. Assault weapons have no place in the hands of civilians. We must demand universal background checks for all gun sales. We must expand access to affordable mental health services and end the stigmatization of individuals with mental illness. You can respect the Second Amendment without disrespecting the lives of Americans. As governor, I pledge to stand up, speak up, and act swiftly on gun sense and gun safety. And I am the only candidate for governor with a track record to back up that commitment. Arms. I'm yeah, a gun I'm owner good. myself. Somebody I respect a lot and who I follow and, you know, I'm very inspired by on Instagram, Killer Mike. You know, he oh he has a strong position on this. Killer and, you Mike. know, I really want to talk to him because I really, really, I oh, really disagree with him. Oh, I, you do? I really disagree with him on this point. You know, he's he's saying that this that the AR is just a tool and it's and, and it's the man that makes the decision. And ultimately I'm like, but without this tool, the scope of destruction would be so much less. And Killer Mike, you're not gonna defend yourself or Atlanta or your family from a tyrannical government. They will shut off the power yeah. in the black community, turn off the water and starve you yeah, in an instant. Out, it will right. take no time. No, no fight like we know what yeah, happened yeah, in yeah. Katrina and you they was eat. bucking off the they was bucking off the bridge when black people started trying to come into the burbs. It's not happening, Killer Mike. You're not defending yourself from a tyrannical government. I think you and him would have a great conversation. I would love to. Killer, you know, I Killer think hit. Killer Mike is phenomenal. The He's the sad part about it is is not that it's really like two valid sides arguing it's it's kind of that one large group of people is being manipulated for the financial gain of one very small group of people yeah. and it's it's not like a new situation that's that's what america is you know what i mean that's what capitalism is you have to have the proletariat and you have to have the bourgeoisie the more famous you get the more you just this morning, the governor of Connecticut was saying that since 2012, the death rate of, of, of murders by uh, gun violence has dropped precipitously. Mm -hmm. I mean, a huge it drop. Works. And we right. know it that it works. We yeah. know when there are stricter gun laws, right. there are less violent deaths due to guns. So this was a <laughs> miss opportunity. And I thought it was just like what John, John just said, a very, uh, very untrue statement. In reference to an AR-15 and a hunting rifle, those are totally different weapons. They are I not, have shot hunting rifles and an AR-15, and it is no, right. that, they are different weapons, John. Rifle. And you're lying to these viewers and I'm trying to promote your tell agenda, me what and the you're wrong. Is. And tell I did not disturb tell, you, John. Tell, Let me finish. Tell I did not disturb you, you while you were lying to these people. Let me finish and dispel your lies. When you, an AR-15 is a weapon to kill multiple people in a short amount of time. A hunting rifle, lying. you can take one shot, then you have to reload. And you know that, John. I Shame said a on you for pushing the NRA rifle. agenda. Shame on you. And there's blood on the hands of people Look, just like you who have this, this flawed is, logic and have this narrow mind. This, Look, I could say that you have blood on your hands. And here's the reason that gun control people keep on pushing laws that have nothing to do with stopping these attacks. The number one rule that they... A uh, very untrue statement. In reference to an AR-15 and a hunting rifle, those are totally different weapons. They are I not. have shot hunting rifles and an AR-15. And it is... No, right. that, they are different weapons, John, rifle. and you're lying to these viewers and I'm trying to promote your tell agenda, me what and the you're wrong. Is. And tell I did not disturb tell, you, John. Tell, Let me finish. Tell I did not disturb you, you while you were lying to these people. Let me finish and dispel your lies. 
When yeah. an AR-15 is a weapon to kill multiple people in a short amount of time. A hunting You're rifle, lying. you can take one shot, then you have to reload. And you know that, John. I Shame said a semi-automatic NRA rifle. agenda. Shame on you. And there's blood on the hands of people Look, just like you who have this, this flawed is, logic and have this narrow mind. This African Americans. Here's the bottom line, though. Uh, what <laughs> the the? It seems like in Trump world, you have to be black or brown to be labeled a terrorist. And if you're white and you commit a mass murder, then all murderers or become a mass murderer. Then you uh, you you are something different. You're middle ill. Yeah, right. The, the bottom line here is this. What does the Second Amendment have to do with this terrorist act? Why are they cloaking themselves in the Second Amendment and their right to bear arms? 47 guns, 100 guns, four different homes, 500 shot, over 500 shot. What does that have to do with the Second Amendment? Who has a right to own weapons of mass destruction? Why would I need an AK-47? Because I'm a gun enthusiast? Then keep it and store it at a, at a range, right? Why can I buy 100 weapons over four years simply because I'm, I don't have a criminal record? This is idiocy. It's insanity. And people are dying, and Republicans are still cloaking themselves in this Second Amendment. It borders on the nonsense. But here's the fundamental but it's issue. Dangerous here's, uh, for America control in this country. I mean, who are these delicate snowflakes that we can't just tell, no, you're not allowed to have 40 guns anymore, Earl. From now on, you can have one gun, max, and six bullets. If you can't hit what you're shooting with six bullets, then you don't need to be shooting at it. Learn karate or use your words. <laughs> I'm sick of this narrative that Americans just love guns so much. It's not true. 78% of Americans don't even own a gun. And 3% of Americans own 50% of all the guns in the country. That's the problem, that whiny 3% that needs to feel secure all the time. That's why I think we should do a buyback program. For every gun you trade in, we give you one half inch of penis enlargement. <laughs> If you trade in 10 guns, you get five more inches. <laughs> and if women want to trade in Vegas after these things happen, but right. what we really need to be praying for is gun control. You know what I'm saying? Gun control and crazy control. What, we, is, what, is, uh, what do you think the, the right gun control would be? I just don't think anybody should be able to get automatic weapons to that magnitude. Like simple and plain. Yeah. Like for what? Like, what do you need a chopper for? Like, what, right, right, like, right, what right. do you need that shit yeah, for? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love guns. Don't get me wrong. I love my Second Amendment rights. I'm all, I, I love my right to bear arms. Yeah. But I don't need that shit. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And I'm going to tell you what really pissed me off. This motherfucker sprayed into a crowd yeah. of defenseless people who weren't expecting it. Yeah. that was down in Charlottesville, they look like a militia. The yeah. only way to yeah. fight a militia is with another militia. So if y'all really down for the cause... Create a militia, please. Create a militia and get it popping. I am not. I live in. I live in the Northeast. These niggas not coming here. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You don't think they're here in the Northeast? No, no, no. no. Uh, that militia. Hold on. I'm not done. The, the militia. The militia no, is not coming here and winning. How about that? Okay. Uh, now listen. Now here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. There's, there's, a, there's a Second Amendment thing. Like if y'all want to strap up, strap up. But we're talking about how to react and what we should do as far as Charlottesville goes, right? Mm -hmm. They are an organized militia. If you're scared, get organized and get ready. I personally am not afraid of them. I'm not. Maybe I might want to call me naive. It is what it is. I feel protected. I am not scared of them. I'm not getting a militia. I'm not strapping up and I'm not going against them. But if whoever is scared. What do you feel protected by? What protection? The area that I live in in the country. That's what I do. Call it naive if you want, but it is what it is. That's my answer. It's not going to change. You live in All I'm saying is full of wait, woods. You don't think there's racist dog, militias out there? Dog, I live, I live wait, two wait, minutes from the can't, fucking Hudson River. I'm good. Hey, host of the podcast, The Terrain Show. You must come back to New York. All right, I'm going to start. You have the you have the advantage because you're because I'm here. Today. Your thoughts on the on the Killer Mike interview? You know, I I I was disappointed that he didn't really answer the questions. I think the core question that you ask, if he wants to talk about increasing gun ownership, right? It, where is the NRA for black and brown people? It starts as a reaction to the Black Panthers, as you note. Yep. Uh, they're not there for Philando Castile. They're not there for John, I mean, they're not there for John Crawford, right? John Crawford was buying a toy yeah. BB gun. But the NRA is a gun lobbying organization. They're not here for the people, they're here for the gun manufacturers. Right. John Crawford was purchasing a gun. Yes. 
and open carrying in an open carry state with yes. not even a real gun. So was Tamir Rice. Shot even and killed in a store. In, uh, in the toy. One Should aisle over from the toy store. be there wow. for him, nope. for a gun purchaser or a right. potential gun purchaser, and that Mike is not able to answer these questions. You're asking simple, direct questions. They're not overly partisan. Just is the NRA there for black people? And we know that the NRA is consistently using black men yes. as a boogeyman mm -hmm. to, to motivate gun sales. Where are you on that, Mike? I need answers on these questions before yep. I can follow you into the pro-NRA, pro-black gun owners. And the whole notion that these men in Starbucks would have survived if they had, had guns, good. that's absurd. We know we cannot be taking up guns against the police. That is not how we're going to win the battle against police brutality. Yeah. I, I could go on all day. I'll let yeah. the, the other guests And Tiffany, speaking of, of using black men to sell guns, you know, the NRA has been pretty explicit about the fact, and gun, I mean, gun manufacturers have been pretty explicit, that having a black man in the White House really helped mm -hmm. gun sales. They scaremongered around Barack Obama, made a lot of money. They actually stockpiled guns to sell, thinking then there's going to be a woman who's going to come bring the black helicopters. She lost. And now companies like Remington that make the AR-15 are financially down the tubes because they don't have a black man to use to scaremonger. And the NRA TV has made numerous uh, disparaging comments about the first black president. And to Killer Mike's point, I mean, I think his effort to say more black people should go out and buy guns, that actually does a tremendous amount to help the gun control argument. Because I can guarantee you, the second you have a million black men with guns, there'll be a whole lot of people on the other side of the divide, all of a sudden very interested in having a conversation on gun control. Yeah. But I think it's what's disturbing to me about this trend that we see, right? So he says he's not here to defend the, the NRA. I Ah, but you did by your brand, by your presence on their uh, their the NRA TV. You then validated this organization the same way that Steve Harvey validated Donald Trump when he stood next right. to him. The same way Kanye West validated him with his blonde hair and stood in the lobby of Trump Towers. The same way Omarosa crawled all the way deep into the sunken place and validated this Ooh. man repeatedly through the campaign trail. <laughs> this is the same thing that Killer Mike did, and it's d disappointing. I grew up in Atlanta. He's done amazing things in Atlanta, and I applaud him for that for highlighting that. Yes, there. There is room for diversity of thought on the left. There is room for diversity of thought among black people. We're not a homogenous group of people. However, the same people who are getting arrested for sitting peacefully in a Starbucks, and for some reason we think the onus is on black people to keep the conversation calm, the same people who are getting shot, who are unarmed, the same people like Philando Castile, these are the people who listen to your records, who are weaned on your truth-telling and hip-hop. And so for him to come on air and then, you know, act like, you know, black people, like, thank you guys for staying calm like sometimes it is okay to be pissed off that you are sitting in a Starbucks minding your own business yes. peacefully the same way that everybody else is and the police come and they arrest these men for doing nothing yep. it's disappointing to see that he wasn't out front on those issues and if we can just acknowledge that the NRA itself is a dubious organization they say they have 4.5 million members I doubt those numbers it's uh, reminiscent of when you had Congressman Gatz on the show and asked them how many NRA members in Florida he said a couple million you said no my friend and it's just over 300,000. This is not, this is a boogeyman of an organization. They, they are, are uh, basically funded by gun manufacturers, not by these members. And so when, even though he came and offered other organizations that people could join, he still lended them some sort of validity by appearing on their network. And this yep. is a, a call to other black people don't get pulled into the sunken place by appearing on these things because they will co-opt your message and your voice and you will be on AM Joy eating crow and apologizing well, for saying some ridiculous <laughs> stuff when we call you out on it. And we are always going to be here to call you out. Believe it. In love. And let me just say, let me give Killer Mike credit for coming on because he wanted yes. to come on. Okay, I'm just going to you know, be proactive that his team reached out to us and they wanted to come on. So I give him credit and I want to give him credit for being willing to come on and because he really did get dragged, okay, uh, on Twitter to rate for this. And and he is somebody who's, who's tried to be an intellectual and sort of positive, very liberal voice politically yeah. for younger people. I saw, him in, I saw him work his magic in barbershops, right, for yes. Sanders. But my, my question, I guess, the bigger picture is, you know, I, I'm not anti. Do people think I'm against anybody having guns? I'm not. Right. But, the, but the conversation when it comes to the NRA is so racialized that I'm not yes. sure you can separate. If, if black people open carried, they'd be killed. Yes, that's right. That's right. Look. You know, I, for a long time, have held Killer Mike in esteem, one of the intellectual rappers, which is why this moment was disappointing.
pointing to me that I thought he was allowed himself to be used by the NRA. He's been in media too long to say, I didn't know how they were going to use that. And the clip that you talked about not allowing his children to participate in the March for Our Lives. Which he was... says is because his son got bad grades. Uh, okay, come on. I mean, like, can we not be gun owners and also want sensible gun uh, reform? Absolutely. Is that possible? Look, That's most NRA members. More people who own guns in an era make more people in that area unsafe. We know that. Yep. So increasing gun ownership ownership will not make us safer. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, we, we need to continue to have this conversation, but the gun uh, ownership conversation is just different when it comes to black people mm. and people of color. It just is because we are just not treated the same way. It just, it just, you know, that's just a reality we have to deal with. Tiffany Cross and Teray, we have to do this again. We're going to have you guys in the same city, though, so we can all hang out at the table. Yes. We'll add cocktails. Doesn't make any sense. That does make no sense. So in this discussion, when we're talking about school safety, there are things that we need to address that include thinking about why is this an issue. And part of it is that we have not passed meaningful, smart gun safety laws in this country. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the NRA has grabbed people by the, their the ball, different the parts balls, of their the body. Balls, yeah, the <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> testicles. The testicles. There's a medical way to say it's a medical term. Testicles, testicles. testicles. A medical term. Right. <laughs> And, and, and has, has, has caused people to have a lack of courage to address the fact, again, another false choice. I'm in favor of the Second Amendment, and Me I too. also want, I want smart gun safety laws. I, assault weapons shouldn't be walking the streets of a civilized country. I agree. Mm -hmm. We should have universal background checks. It makes sense. It's just practical that you might want to know before someone can buy this, what's blocking the conversation and what's driving um, our, our ongoing obsession with guns. It has something to do with the complicity of politicians, right, with business models that I've mentioned earlier. It has something to do with the cowardice of, 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 of everyday ordinary folk. But it also has something to do with culture. And I'm just going to the point. And this is, this is a point that we really have to think about. There's a kind of toxic masculinity at the heart of this gun this gun culture, rooted in a myth about who we take ourselves to be. America's rugged individualism, the government is not going to protect you, we can protect ourselves, right? And there's a way in which this AR-15 is actually the weapon of the Minuteman, right? There's, there's this old myth around it. So we have to begin to imagine ourselves differently. I think we need a revolution of value in this country, a moral revolution, where we begin to change what we care about, what we demand of ourselves, what we take to be actually valuable. Let me just say this too. Every day in certain communities, Babies are walking to school, having to deal with gun violence. Every day in this community, certain parent, in certain communities, certain parents are burying their children because of gun violence. So there are some people in this country right now, folks that I know who are in my family who are friends, who have had to deal with this matter as a as showing as, pictures as that match issue as a matter of a circumstance, um, and it's all because, as John said. This gun culture, this gun culture that makes people money. It's a background so, check. I just want to ask you this because I'm a gun owner. You know, I don't mind that you know that I have a gun. I don't, you can come in my house and look for you. You can get all, whatever you need. I don't understand why anyone objects to getting rid of automatic weapons. Automatic weapons, they're not for hunting. They do nothing. They're not, they're only there to kill. And you'll notice that a lot of the things that have happened happened with automatic weapons. When we see that, why don't we say, you know, who really needs to have one other than people who are at, mm -hmm. at war? Right. Yeah, what is it about? If we're going to blame guns for this, instead of looking at the facts of the person and where they were and where they were traveling and where they got married and where they came back and all the other flags around them, tell me what law you would have passed that would have made this not happen. Okay. I don't think there is a law. Okay, Charles. So you were saying that you do think that there are some solutions. Right, Go ahead. right. So I think that is the, always the wrong question. It is always the, the question that people ask who are advocating for no laws at all, right, which is to say, what would you do in this particular case that would have stopped this particular crime? There's often not an answer to that, that question in, directly. What I think you have then to do Then why did the president Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't no, interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Don't do that. Uh, so what you have to say is, this is unacceptable, right? right? The, Everybody the, says the that. Level, Everybody the agrees. level we have is unacceptable. Yes. How do we start to, to whittle away 
at the numbers. You're not going to solve them all. Yes, right, right? of course. You're but not going to solve them all. You just you just want to yes, start entering that. If you? you if you get ten, so you start with the idea that number one, most Americans, overwhelming majority of Americans, agree that we should have universal background checks. Forty percent of all weapons are acquired without a background check in this country. That's a lot of different ways, right? So some of it's off-market sales, yes. but also it's like so, intergenerational transfers, just transfers, right. you know, when your uncle gives you your, your first gun and when you're 12. And we don't know yet. We just don't know how it you know. worked. It was right. legally. Right. We right. right. it was right. legal. So there are a lot of ways. Okay, let me get that right. in. But the one, you know, type of gun that we have taken out of circulation completely done. Machine gun. It's machine gun, right? We did it. We, it was registration. You had to register, you had to pay a you know, big fee or whatever it was that you had to pay. And this idea, the, the argument about you know, if you take it out of circulation, then only the criminals will have it, and then the criminals will use it, and we will be defenseless. Well, we don't see a bunch of machine guns running around shooting things up, right? Because eventually, things do phase out. We have a lot of guns in circulation, but it is not beyond the pale to believe that you could figure out ways to constrain a particular type of weapon, stop producing it, and that eventually it would phase out. Uh, before we go, let's give another question. That the gun industry understands where its market is going, that they're not selling mm -hmm. more shotguns, they're not necessarily selling more pistols, they are selling more semi-automatic. So they're very uh, reluctant to sign on to anything that would Is that because the profits. deer are getting faster? The deer are <laughs> super <laughs> fast and they're aggressive and, you know, they don't, you know. But no, I mean, they're... It, and how, many, how many uh, hunters, you know, shoot more than two bullets anyway? Yeah. Right. And I don't think hunters are the ones buying the Another guns, yeah. you know. It's people who are doing the survivalist stuff. It's people who are doing the sort mm -hmm. of camps that are, are attached to gun shows where you run off into the woods and pretend that you're in the military. It's that kind of thing. It's gaming. And then it's also collectors. It's people. Mm -hmm. um, we, were, we, we did a forum last night. I think the three of us were together, Jonathan and um, the mayor and I. And uh, I was talking about a guy I met in Mississippi who's a conservative Republican. We had a really great long conversation. He said, look, I, you know, I didn't have guns. I wasn't even interested in guns. But when we heard that the president was going to be doing gun control, I went out and I started buying them. And then when mm -hmm. I heard it was focused on... Because they'll become valuable. They're valuable. So you have people who are collecting them, too. So the gun industry <laughs> understands that they've got to support their industry where their bread is buttered and it's right now on semi-automatics. You guys have seen assault weapons kill babies and police officers. Um, you know, I, I don't know where we are as a country when a, a, a seated member of Congress acting in her official duties as a member of Congress, and her name is Gabby Giffords, is shot and so debilitated how is it that her colleagues, out of their own self-interest, if nothing else that is about humanity, how is it they don't act? Their colleague, not while she was engaged in something that has nothing to do with the job of being a member of Congress. How is it they don't act? How is it, after 20 babies, six and seven-year-olds at Sandy Hook, are slaughtered that they don't act. I'll tell you, I think what should have happened is they should have closed the chambers of Congress on this House and the Senate side and say, all you members go in there, only you, and spread out the autopsy photographs of those babies and require them to look at those photographs and then vote your conscience. You think suicide so what would be the motive in reimposing that same law? Well, also, I noticed on your, your data, you didn't put down that uh, 90,000 Americans are shot, 30,000 killed uh, by guns uh, every single year. Uh, but the real question well, is... What this, percentage uh, of those are suicides, by the way? Do you uh, know? So one, people like to put that out like it matters, but two-thirds Well, it suicide. does matter, actually. Well, no, I'll be... So we'll say... The majority were suicides. Two-thirds are suicide, but that means right, 10,000 Americans are murdered. That's one. And two, which is... And two, which is Just critically... Just don't use funny statistics. Two, That's all which I'm is, asking. Two, which is critically important. All the data shows the presence of a gun increases a successful suicide percentage. So that's yeah, important. That's true. Lives so you matter. think suicide, just as a side note, since you're a liberal, I assume you're for assisted suicide. Well, you're suddenly against suicide when it's committed with a gun? No, or no, what's your no. Position I just don't want to make sure. I want to make sure we're all clear because I know your master of conflation is good, and I just want to make no, sure. No, it's we're not. All... It's it, no, no. You, you can't say there are thirty thousand gun deaths and not note that two thirds were self-inflicted. I'm not. I did. I'm not for suicide assistant. 
a physician assistant or otherwise, I'm sure you are. But I just want to be clear with our viewers that no, you're misusing the staff. I want to be clear staff, and say that, which you were. that the, the lives and loss of suicide also matter. And the 10,000 murders should be counted as well. Look, I, but, look, I'm not for gun killing of any kind. My only point is, look, legislators make laws, and they do so in the hope they will have their intended effect. And we know from 10 years of experience that an assault weapons ban doesn't work. There's no debate about that. The DOJ came to that conclusion after studying it. So why would we want it again? It's a simple question. So but the, actually, the real question is, and it's always to you, Tucker, do you believe that we shouldn't have unfettered access to guns in this country? That's no, the I don't question know what that means. I don't live, no, no, I live no, in I'll a world of specifics. I, no, no, I no, cover no, no. lawmakers who are trying to impose laws on the rest of us, and I try to assess whether those laws are no, wise what we and will should be effective. Do if we're both being honest and want to deal with the gun I am violence. being honest. And so what we have to start is a point at where people agree. And what I'm saying to you is should we have unfettered access to guns in this country? I don't even know that's what that means. We don't have unfettered we access absolutely to guns. Do. Far we, from we it. Own, no, that's look, that's this, silly overstatement. That's not I mean, silly at all. That's a question I'm trying to get to you so that we can have an honest conversation about what to do after we've agreed with that. No, okay. So let, let's get, ra rather than get into this sort of airy world, it's let's, get airy, into the, uh, let's get into the, uh, those words don't mean much. Let's get into the specifics of the legislation that the left, the Democratic Party is pushing now. They are saying that guns that have something called a barrel shroud ought to be prohibited, outlawed, banned. Again, and my question is why? Why would a barrel shroud make a gun more dangerous? Do you but again, know? that's the wrong question. The question why is it is, the wrong question? I'm responding the, to the a question proposal that you support. The unfettered access to guns. That is what the question is. And what you do successfully, and it works, because you give people red <laughs> okay. meat. Okay. And the, the, you no, know, no, no, the fans no, like it. I'm but, it's not no, about no, the no, fans no, 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 or red meat. I'm responding to an actual piece of proposed legislation in the U.S. Congress proposed by your allies in the Democratic Party, and I'm asking you about the details of that legislation. It would propose banning guns that have pistol grips and barrel shrouds and bayonet lugs. Have but there you, been you a lot of mass killings with bayonets? See, what, what is this? What you do well is... Can I, can I... Let me... Let me... Listen. For the past three days... I have been on the verge of tears every second, and most of the people here have been crying 24 hours straight. Yeah, yes, we need to address mental health, but mental health in this particular issue, let's not get it twisted, is a secondary issue. If someone who has a mental issue did not have access to guns that should only be available in war zones, we would not be dealing with this. Who needs a bullet piercing bullet piercing, ar armor piercing bullets to go hunting. Who needs an assault rifle to go hunting? You can't even use the prey that you kill with an assault rifle if you indeed do it. No one needs an assault rifle to go out and shoot a deer. No one needs an assault rifle that's capable of shooting 10, 20, 30 rounds off at the same time to shoot a duck or to shoot quail. It does not make sense. Our first, the first thing that we need to do and according to everyone who is here, even gun enthusiasts, is talk about what we're doing with assault rifles. Why should guns that should only be available in war zones, why are they available to people who are mentally healthy and people who are not mentally healthy? That's the issue that we need to deal with. So to say that gun violence is down does not make sense and to me is insulting to everyone who lost a loved one here and who is dealing with that. It doesn't matter if gun violence is down. 26 children or 20 children are dead here. Truly automatic weapons we don't have. You know, we banned truly automatic weapons, I think, in 1934. Right, but we still got a lot of them, Rand. Come yeah, on. Well, what we have is not automatic weapons, so we have semi-automatic. So they fire in a fairly fast sequence, but you can't pull the trigger and they come like a machine gun. Those are, okay. those are no longer but out But you know there. what I'm saying. Yeah. You know but what, what I'm is, saying. is that there's a, a repetitive fire. Uh -huh. People do hunt with them, and people do also uh, shooting and sport shooting and uh, target shooting and things with these guns. And come to Kentucky, and I'll introduce you to there. There are a lot of people who like and enjoy this as a sport. But the other problem is, is if we're going to take away ownership of specific types of guns, you really have to modify it. something that big as to either be legislation or even possibly a constitutional amendment. We can't allow one individual. Most people, I think, are for the Second Amendment right. Most people, are. I am for that. I think people should be able to protect themselves. 
But if you're going to be honest about it, I don't think our founding fathers had these automatic weapons and military st style weapons in mind when the Second Amendment was drafted, when the Constitution implying, was drafted. So I, are you implying for the police or are you implying for the private citizen? Because the majority of private citizens are not allowed to own fully automatic weapons. It's for anyone. Okay, well, the gun law says that you and I can't just randomly go out and buy an automatic weapon, so let's deal with the facts here. A semi-automatic weapon is a gun that you and I are allowed to own, and in different places they have different rules. But to imply that anyone can walk out and buy an automatic weapon... And Kimberly, you know, when you interview Republicans, do they still believe that Ronald Reagan uh, is emblematic of their party? Um, or, in general, are the Republicans that you interview... Um, have they gotten so far to the right of Ronald Reagan now um, that what he said is no longer operative as a Republican point of view? Well, I think when you ask them, of course, they say that they uh, are the party of Reagan still and they uh, embrace those principles. Uh, but the intervening factor that has uh, happened in that time is the uh, explosion of the gun industry. And I think you're right. The, the point that was made that the NRA uh, is a lobby group for the gun industry. This is an industry that, that generates uh, tens of billions of dollars in sales and firearms and accessories and ammunition. Uh, so in that sense, that that is why uh, it, things are so different now. That is why you see after there is a, a mass shooting and there is a discussion of gun control, uh, the rhetoric of uh, NRA supporters uh, is to scare people uh, to believe that their guns are going to be taken away and actually spur uh, purchases of guns. We usually see a uh, gun manufacturing and sales go up after every one of these uh, incidents. And it's become such a major, major moneymaker, frankly, uh, that it's really, really difficult to push against. And that is what keeps uh, the money flowing into these lawmakers uh, from the NRA and the NRA threats to campaign against them at election time uh, if they support anything, even something as reasonable as bump stock legislation. The NRA didn't back bump stop stop legislation. They wanted uh, a, a regulation, mm -hmm. something that's a lot easier to implement and also a lot easier to reverse. Uh, so it's a very, very strong stronghold that it has over these lawmakers. Right. And so, um, Sarah, do we can just throw up a map here of how uh, states are scored by the Giffords Law Center. Uh, and of course, we know Gabby Giffords, a member of Congress who was um, the, the victim uh, of, a, of an attempted ma of a mass shooter, um, which changed nothing. Her colleagues in Congress didn't change um, their attitude toward guns at all. Those are the scorecards. I guess the darker blue means that you're more permissive. Um, and then you look at the polling, which is pretty overwhelming. And NPR Ipsos asked, do you believe gun law should be more strict or less strict? 75% at the end of February polled said they should be more strict. So the vast majority of the American people are on one side. The self-declared 5 million person strong NRA in a country of 326 million people says they should be more strict. How is it that they have so much power? Also, the way you get their attention is when you begin to throw people out of office. As long as those individuals say this is one of the issues they care about and it's not like the NRA <clears throat> where it's the most fundamental issue, you're going to have this problem. I tell people in the ed reform movement, you want to have multiple issues out here. No, the reason the NRA is so successful is because there's only one issue they care about, Second Amendment. You will never see them send a press release out about same-sex marriage or about affirmative action or about DACA, all they care about are guns. But you also, have to fight. Uh, you have to fight them like the way they also fight. Well, brother, but, 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 my but, point but, was, if I and Congressman, you know, you mentioned, of course, uh, you know, Dr. King's assassination, Bobby Kennedy. After those assassinations, that did spur Congress on to pass. Uh, at the time, you know, meaningful gun control legislation. You know, you cannot buy machine guns because there was gun control legislation that the NRA supported. Um, shipping guns through the mail became illegal because of legislation that at the time the NRA supported. Is it time for members of Congress to turn against the NRA since it has now turned against gun control? It is time for the Congress uh, to, to be brave, to be bold, uh, to be courageous. Uh, I've said just a few days ago that we should be headlights and, and not taillights, that we will call to lead and we must get out there and push the American people. More than 90 percent of the American people, both Democrats and Republicans, want us to do something. We must not lose and just live in fear. 
and, and not be afraid of the whether we're going to lose some votes here or there, or that we will not receive political contribution. We have to do what is right. Sometimes you have to go with your gut, with your heart, with your soul.